Welcome to Moment with Bishop Roland Peters. Last three weeks, I started a new teaching series titled Divine Accuracy in Ministry. A teaching series taken from my book, Ministry Success Principles. Remember, you can view all the past and future episodes right here on this My Ministry page on Facebook. And you can also buy a copy of the ebook online through the link below or get a free copy whenever you send an offering of any size to support our ministry operations worldwide. Thank you. Today's topic is Divine Accuracy in Ministry, Part 3. Divine Accuracy in Ministry, Part 3. Remember, we said it is important to be accurate in spiritual matters if we want to please God and be successful in ministry. Alright? We also need to stay on course to do the right things. Otherwise, we may be doing the wrong things even though we think that our motive or our motives may be good or sincere. Listen, once you are on a wrong course in life, your decisions may always be wrong and the result can sometimes be devastating. Okay? So it has been said, ignorance of the law is no excuse. This is also applicable in spiritual matters. Now, the Bible gave us examples of people that were not accurate because of assumptions or presumptions and of others that were guilty of omission or the sin of commission. Now, for example, you remember we discussed people like Saul the king, all right, in 1 Samuel 15, 3, how he disobeyed God. God told him to go and utterly destroy the Amalekites and how he went and he did not completely destroy the Amalekite. He speared the king, he speared some animals. And uh, he thought he wanted to use those things to sacrifice to God. But God rejected him because of those things that he had gathered, supposedly that he wanted to use to serve God and so on and so forth. Alright? Then also we look at someone like uh, King Uzzah. We were told about uh, no, that first we'll look at Uzziah, all right? There was the before, well, today we are going to look at King Uzzah. But then that day, we, we, last week, we talked about King Uzziah. No, not King now. We talked about Uzziah, all right? The minister that wanted to help God, all right? The man, the young man that wanted to help God, and uh, by that, he tried to touch the ark, and the Lord smote him, and he died right there. And I told you, you, God does not need your help. God needs you to be accurate, okay? All right, because particularly when it comes to divine matters, God does not expect you to touch divine things if you are not, if you are not fitted for that divine things. And as we go on in this study, we are going to understand what I'm saying. Now, today I want us to go deeper a little bit, okay, and look at another example like I did mention the other time. Today we're going to look at another person that was not accurate. And this time around, it was king. It was a king. And the name is King Uz Uzzah. K king Uzziah now, sorry. Alright, Uzziah was the other guy who touched the ark, but today we are looking at uh, King Uzziah. Now, we were told, alright, like we understand. Now, there is something I want to show you today, like I said. You see, in the Old Testament, there were three main anointings or offices in the Old Testament. Now, the prophet's anointing. The kingly anointing and the, and the anointing of the priest or the priestly anointing. That is the prophet's anointing, the king anointing, and the priest anointing. Now, it is it, only these three people that carry the anointing in the Old Testament. You are, you are either a prophet or a king or a priest. All right? Now, if you occupy either of these po positions, you were anointed by the Spirit of God, okay? Now, those who disregard these anointings or offices and try to function in those to which they were not called, paid for it dearly, all right? An example was King Uzziah. King Uzziah was blessed by God, and he prospered greatly in his calling as a king. He was called to be, he was anointed as a king, not as a priest, not as a prophet, now, King Uzziah was blessed by God and he prospered greatly, the Bible tells us, in his calling as a king until he took it upon himself to do the work of a priest. That's where he missed it, alright? He was doing well. God prospered him, alright? 
But he got to a time. He just took it upon. He just came to his hand. Look, I just, ah, is it only the prophet, pastor that can do the ministry? I can do it. Just like today, we have a lot of people who are going into the ministry that God did not call to go to the ministry. Maybe they are anointed businessmen. They are good when it comes to business. They are good bankers, good lawyers. But today, without being called by God into the ministry, they felt because they have the money or they have the status, they want to go into the things of God. We need to be very, very careful. All right? And this was the situation with King Uzziah. Now, let's look at... Second Chronicles, let me read this report in Second Chronicles uh, 26, verse 18. Second Chronicles 26, verse 18. In the New King James Version, it says, He said, you know, do you know, the priest confronted him actually. The priest, because when Uzziah, the king Uzziah went into the wrong thing, we were told that the priest confronted him. And they withstood him, King Uzziah, the Bible says, says, and they withstood King Uzziah and said to him, It is not for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord. But for the priest, the son of Aaron, who are consecrated to burn incense. Get out of the sanctuary, the priest said, for you have trespassed. Can you imagine? Somebody was a king for a priest to now walk him out of the temple. All right? Get out of it because he was in the wrong office this time around. He said, Get out of the sanctuary, for you have trespassed. He said, Because of this, <clears throat> you shall have no honor from the Lord God. You shall have no honor. From the Lord. Now see, when you go into the wrong office, if you go into what God did not call you to do, you will have no honor in that area. God himself will not honor you. But the Bible says, no man take this honor unto himself as he that was called as was Aaron. So you don't have to take the it upon yourself to go into the thing that God is, did not call you into. If you do in this kingdom, particularly divine things, if you go and do the divine things that God did not ask you to do, the Bible makes us to understand that you shall have no honor from the Lord God because you have trespassed. All right? So you need to get out of that sanctuary, particularly those of you that going, want to go into the things of God that God did not call you into. That's what we are told in 2 Chronicles 26. You can read it for yourself. You see? But you see, pride got the better part of King Uzziah. And the rebuke and correction of Azariah, the priest. Then Uzziah became furious, the Bible tells us. He said, if you look at verse 19, he said, Then Uzziah became furious, and he had a censer in his hand to burn his sense. He wanted to do it by himself. And while he was angry with the priest, leprosy broke out on his forehead. He became leprosy. That's a curse from the Lord. Before the priest in the house of the Lord. Listen. He said, while he was angry with the priest, the priest that was trying to correct him, Alright? Leprosy broke out on his forehead. He became leprous. I remember, leprous people don't stay among people. If we apply the only day, they will send them to lepers colony. They will can't stay in the city. Leprosy broke out on his forehead. Can you imagine a king? A king, an honorable person. Now he becomes dishonorable because he has, gone into, he has done the dishonorable thing. So that's why he will not receive an honor from the Lord. And while he was angry with the priest, leprosy broke out on his forehead before the priest in the house of the Lord, beside the incense altar. Right there beside the altar of incense. All right? right in the altar, leprosy broke out on him. Now, just like in Kuguzaya, a lot of people are suffering the spiritual leprosy today. They are going into, they are having a, a kind of leprosy situation and on a dishonorable situation because that they bring upon themselves because they are touching. If they think the divine thing that God did not ask them to touch, or they are going into the ministry that God didn't call them to do, or they are touching divine things that God, things, things that are sacred that God did not expect them to touch or go into. So King Uzziah, because he operated in the wrong office, ended up with leprosy, imagine that, even beside the altar in the house of the Lord. So you see, operating in the wrong office, can cost you your life. He was anointed by God to be a king, but he wanted to do the work of a priest. And because of that, a curse came upon him. He became leprous. I pray for you that that will not be your portion in Jesus' name. So let's go on here. So you see, operating in the wrong office can cost you your life. It can cost you your ministry, and it can bring a lot of dishonorable things into your life and ministry. And I pray that will not be your portion in Jesus' name. All right? It can produce sickness in people's lives that cannot be explained. So let's stay in our individual calling and flow in our individual anointing. I'll say that again. Stay in your individual callings and flow in your individual anointing. Now, when I say that, stay going straight into or printing the wrong office can bring a curse upon one, 
or it can cause you your life, or it can bring sickness. Remember, the Bible talks about the Lord's Supper. That some people, when they don't design the body of Christ well and they take it anyhow, he said because of religious thought is there in the Bible. He uh, said because of that, that, that I'm talking about New Testament principles now, and spiritual divine principle. He said if you don't design the body of Christ and you are you 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 know you don't design it and you are just misbehaving, taking the loss apart anyhow. He said because of it, many people have become sick, many people have become weak, and even some die because of the holy communion. You know, some people just see the Holy Communion as ordinary bread and wine. No, it's more, it's deeper than that. It's the body of Christ. And if you don't design it, the Bible says because of it, if you don't design the body of Christ, people can pay for it with their lives. They can pay for it in the form of sickness and so on and so forth. I pray you will not go into wrong things and the Lord is going to uphold you and help you in Jesus' name. Now, another person I want us to consider today before we go is Moses. Moses will ever be remembered as an anointed servant of God, a great servant of God. You remember, God commissioned him to bring Israel or the children of Israel out of Egypt and into the promised land, that is Canaan. Moses succeeded in bringing the people of God out of Egypt, but he was disqualified to take them into the promised land. Why? Because he was not accurate at the water of Meribah. The Lord had said unto Moses, speak to the rock when the people needed water to drink. Now, because God wants to be honored before the people. And he told the servant, now just go before that rock and speak to the rock. Stand before the rock and just say a word. And say, like, saying like this, water come out. And water will have just gushed out, you know, like a spring of water will just come out as if you dug a borehole and uh, you hit the water and the thing will just spill out, begin to spill out like that. Now God says, speak, just speak to the rock and it will yield its water. That's what the Bible says, that the rock will give its water. Now that's, you can see Numbers 20 verse 8. Numbers chapter 20 verse 8. But what did Moses do? Moses lifted, up, lifted his hand and with his rod, because he was angry, you know, those people were annoying him, those people, and he was angry. He carried the rock up like this, as if it was his power that did it, and he smote the rock twice. Bah! Bah! And water came out. Water came out, okay? But God said to Moses, speak. But Moses smote the rock with his rod. That was inaccurate. That was not accuracy. It was, Moses was not accurate. God says, speak, but he smote. He offended God by not being accurate in following the divine instructions. Now, I want you to see the danger of the anointing and the deception of results. All right? You can do something wrong, and yet you get the result in the things of God. Because God just wants to cover his own name. Even though Moses missed God, the anointing still flowed. All right? You know God said, speak, but he didn't speak. Is moot. Numbers 20, 11, you can read it. It's still now, let's read it together. Numbers 20, verse 11 says, And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod, smote the rock twice, and the water came out abundantly. Look at that. The water even came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also, their animals. All right? Moses and Aaron may have thought that results and proof equals right standing with God, like many people think today. They might have thought, oh, result, as long as you get result, it doesn't matter. As long as you are getting result in ministry, it doesn't matter if you do it right or wrong. My friend, I beg you, if you don't want God to curse you, if you don't want to miss heaven, learn to do things right. Otherwise, Jesus said, even some people that perform miracles, one size and wonder in his name, they will come to him that day and said, sir, we, we even perform miracles, signs and wonder in your name. And Jesus said, get away from me, I don't know you. So, you see, although water came out abundantly, yet his method was wrong. It was not accurate. He didn't follow divine instruction. Therefore, what, see what God said. Therefore, the Lord spake unto, that's in Numbers 20 verse 12. If you look at verse 12. The Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron. Because you believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. Look at that. It cost Moses a lot. Moses pleaded twice against this decision, but it was to no avail. God was, was already angry with him. 
He was disqualified eventually because of lack of accuracy. This is what I'm warning you for. I'm warning you against. So that you don't get disqualified even though you have acquired a lot of results. Or you might have even gathered certain things abundantly and yet God rejects you. I pray that will not be your portion. He was very, he was very busy and committed to God. Getting results, getting abundant things done, like a lot of people are doing today. A lot of people are into building of things for God that God didn't ask them to do. Yet, to people who look at it, oh, this man is a successful man of God. He has built this, he built that, he built camp, he built university, he built... Now, if God asks you to do it, yes, that's fantastic, you will be rewarded. But a lot of people are copying others. God, God didn't ask them to do it. Putting pressure on church members or their partners. You know, what they will have used for evangelism now is they use it for some, so many other uh, kind of things that will, that will not go with us to heaven. Alright? So, you see, even though he was very busy, Moses was busy doing this, doing that, doing that, and he got a lot of things abundantly, yet he failed in the area of divine accuracy. He did not pay attention to divine details and instructions. On the other hand, we found two outstanding records of those who had, who had successful ministries based on God's plan and purpose. They passed the test of accuracy. They knew why they came into the world and did just that. And now, these outstanding characters are, were, are Jesus and Paul. Paul, at the end of his heartly mission, declared, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness with the Lord. The righteous just shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but also unto all them that love is appearing. That you find that in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 to 8. Now, Jesus, you know, the first person is Paul, and I told these two outstanding characters. The first person was Paul, the other person was Jesus. Jesus also declared at the end of towards the end of his ministry on earth, his earthly ministry. You know, he came. He was here 30, 33 and a half years, and he, he went to the cross and so on and so forth. Now, we were told, Jesus said, it is finished. Jesus knew the scope of his ministry. He knew where it started and he knew when it ended. He knew where it started and he knew where it ends. And, com he, and therefore, he commanded the apostles to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to everyone. And Paul also, like I said, and I did mention, also knew what he was called to do. And so when it ended, he declared, Paul declared, he said, I have finished my course. All right? I have run the race and I have finished my course. Now, it is unfortunate today that many ministers don't even know what they are called to do. They are jack of all trade and master of none. They copy anything and everything that goes on around them. They are not and they are never original. I like the way John L. Masson put it. He said, when you are trying to be like someone else, the best you can ever be is number two. All right? Now, you need to understand the scope, the limit of your ministry, calling and grace. I pray for you today that God will help you to be accurate in divine matters. You shall not do things presumptuously in Jesus' name. God bless you. Remember to get my book titled, Ministry Success Principle. You will succeed in Jesus' name. Remember to also like and follow my ministry page on Facebook. See you next time as we continue this subject on this teaching that I believe will be a great blessing to you and others on this channel. Bye for now and God bless you.